Hey, you guys, uh, welcome to Algebra 1 uh, for another uh, section of today, 8.7, writing quadratic functions. Uh, today, vocabulary words are linear factor, formulate, reasonableness, and strategy. Go ahead and pause this if you need to read over it so you can know what's going to happen during this lesson. Okay, so let's try to uh, focus on, on uh, focus on the main lesson of today, uh, key concept. Each linear factor of the quadratic expression corresponds to a solution of related quadratic equation and a zero related quadratic function. Now, um, this information is basically like a, like a recall or something that we have already covered in the past lessons. So they're just written uh, differently and they're expressed differently as the, as for example, this one is a quadratic expression. It does not have y equals or doesn't have equal zero. When it has uh, equal zero, then it's gonna be considered a quadratic equation. And whenever you have the, the quadratic function, you have this uh, function of x equals x squared plus three x minus four. This could be also written as y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, so this is some, something that uh, we should know already uh, since we have covered in the past lessons. And here they're telling us uh, use the linear factors of the quadratic expressions to find the solutions. So we grab this information and we factor out this uh, uh, quadratic expression and we try to solve our zeros. Again, we uh, graph each one of them. We put it separately, equal to zero, and we solve for our variables. So in this case, we have our two zeros. Now, um, the solutions of the equations uh, are the zeros of the related uh, quadratic functions and the x intersects of the graph. So if we plug this in, this, uh, uh, this value into the quadratic expression, we know that this is true and as well for the other one is true as well. That makes uh, only those two solutions um, true, uh, that it's gonna provide a zero into the quadratic expression. Here is just a, like, a, a, like a graph. It goes to the location at one and as well negative four. Again, this is your zeros, your roots, your x-intercept. All of this, all of this is just basically a quick review of what we have covered before in the past lessons, okay? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, review some concept before we move in uh, to the main idea of today. So describing the relationship between the linear factors of the quadratic expressions x squared minus 2x minus 15 and the zeros of related quadratic functions. So technically, uh, we need to find a factor form for this expression. First, we need to set this up as equals to zero. So I'm just rewriting the quadratic expression and we're making it as equals to zero. Now let's go ahead and factor out this section. Again, if you have any trouble with the factorization, make sure you, uh, you go back and review chapter seven. All right, so again, we need to figure out what times what is gonna give us x squared for the first part. We have x and x. And then we look at the last number, 15. Well, we have a negative 15. What two numbers multiply each other is gonna give us negative 15, but when we combine them, we get a negative two x. Well, uh, two numbers that uh, multiply will give us 15, it will be a five and a three. Five times three will give us 15, but one of them has to be a negative in order to be a negative 15. Since we have a negative for the two, when we combine them, then we need to look for the strongest number. The strongest number is a five, so we put the negative here and we put the positive here. Negative five 
plus three will give us the negative two in the middle. When you multiply these two, it will give us negative 15. So when trying to figure out our solutions, uh, we have x equals and x equals. Uh, if you wanna go back to, to 8.6, um, so you can know what's going on, uh, please go ahead and review so. Uh, what's the opposite of negative five? Well, positive five. Then the opposite of three is negative three. So these are your two solutions that passes uh, solutions. This is what uh, the two points that passes through the x-intercepts um, on the parabola, okay? Now, using these two points, the five and the negative three, we're gonna go ahead and, and practice this graphing it, okay? So our solutions again was uh, five and negative three. We're gonna choose a five here and then negative three here. Those are, those are your two locations. There are two locations that is, uh, the parabola is gonna be going through. Now we need to find our axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, uh, again, if, if we recall this information, uh, to find our axis of symmetry, we have x equals negative b times your 2a. So our, our b in this case is gonna be a negative two. Again, this is your a, this is your b, and this is your c. Our a is one. So since we have a negative two, times another negative will be a positive two. And then two times uh, two times a, which is a one, well, we have only a two. If we reduce it, it's just a one. So we know that our x value is one. We need, still need to figure out the coordinates for our y's so in order to find our, our vertex. So we use this one and plug it into this equation. So we have y equals substitute to the value of x with one. So we have one squared minus two times one, and then we have a minus 15. In this case, we have y equals one minus two minus 15. Y equals, so we have one minus two is negative one and then negative minus 15 is gonna provide us a minus 16. So our coordinates for the vertex, it's at the location of one and negative uh, 16, all right? So let's go ahead and, and uh, view this uh, information here. Uh, let, let's see, just give me a second. All right. We notice that our y-axis is going by, by fives. So therefore this is gonna be negative five, negative 10, negative 15. And here they're going by ones. So this is a one, this is a negative one. So our coordinate is a one and negative 16. So it's gonna be more or less around here, your third dot. And then when we uh, combine these three dots, like a curve, we're gonna have something like this, going upwards, the parabola. I'm pretty sure um, you guys could do a much better job um, doing the, the graph. Uh, it's very hard to do this through a menu pad uh, to, to write on this. But overall, um, 
I'm gonna provide you a better picture of, from, from this section. So you could have an idea of the, of the, of the graph that it should look like. Let me see. There you go. So, oh, sorry. So the graph that I should look like uh, is something uh, like this. Um, in case uh, you wanna go through it, you wanna see through it, uh, read it carefully. But uh, basically that's basically what we did. Okay, and this just looks much precise uh, graph that we just drew a while ago. Again, all of this is just a, a, like, a, like a quick uh, recall uh, um, that you guys have been working on in the past re uh, lessons. Um, let's go ahead and practice it one more time. We need to factor out this equation. Let's start with parentheses equals zero. What times what is gonna provide us x squared, x and x. And then look at the last number. What two numbers multiply each other will give us a two? Only two times one. Since uh, everything is a plus, we just put plus and plus. Because two plus one will give us a three in the middle when you combine them. Now find the zeros. Opposite of, uh, of two is negative two and the opposite of one is negative one. So this is your your two solutions. Okay. This is just a, again, there, there's actually a, um, a main idea of why we're going this practice uh, from the past lessons, because this lesson that we're gonna be focused on, we're actually gonna do things a little bit backwards. We're gonna go back to, to this, type of expression of a quadratic uh, equations from solutions to, uh, uh, to an equation. So right now we're just going from equation to solutions and we're gonna go backwards and then uh, following uh, problems. But first, uh, let's go ahead and, and read over this. So in order to write a quadratic uh, functions, if a real number r is a solution of a quadratic equation in a standard form, then x minus r is the factor of related quadratic function. This is gonna be considered your formula. Okay, since each solution r corresponds to a zero of the related quadratic function, you can use the zeros to find the factor of the form. In an example, suppose quadratic function y equals uh, the function of x has zeros, six and eight, which again, these are your solutions. Then x minus six and x minus eight are considered the factors. Notice that these are also your, your r's from this formula. So the factor form of the quadratic function with the zero, six, and eight can be written as shown below. So technically, uh, just by putting this uh, number with the formula, it just created a parenthesis and you have this type of form. Now, if you wanna write in a standard form, then you perform the, the FOIL system and later on, we're gonna find our, what's the value of A as well. But for the meantime, we're just leaving it like this. Now, I personally do not like using the formula uh, for reasons that uh, some people you know, are gonna get a little bit confused with the negative numbers as your solutions. But if you're familiarized uh, much better using the formula, then go ahead and apply it, go ahead and use it. Uh, without any problem, but I'm gonna show you the, the way I usually do things so that way you won't get confused. So let's go ahead and practice uh, uh, the problems. So we have two solutions. Uh, the solutions of the quadratic equations are this and this. So these two are your solutions. What is the standard form? Standard form again is your AX squared. 
plus bx plus c of the quadratic equation. So since we have these two solutions, we need to set it up as x equals negative two. Let me write this better, negative two and x equals eight. Now, like I mentioned, we're going backwards. Since we got this, then uh, if we try to go one step backwards, we need to make this expression as equals to zero. One way to do that is that we add two on both sides and we subtract eight on both sides. So that way we have the expression as x plus two equals zero and x minus eight equals zero. Since we have these two uh, uh, expressions already, again, uh, by the formula, it's x minus r. That's what we come from uh, at the end. But like I told you, I don't like using that formula. I just rather do this so nobody will get confused. Then you grab those two informations and put them in parentheses, x plus two x, x minus eight equals zero. Now, since we need to write a, a, in a standard form, we don't need to write equals zero. We could just perform the FOIL system after, uh, after this point. We could have it as y equals. And then if we perform the FOIL system, x times x, we get x squared, x minus eight, x times uh, negative eight is negative eight x. And then two times x, you have positive two x. And then two times negative 16, ah, sorry, I already gave you the answer. Two times negative eight is negative 16. Combine like terms. So your final uh, result for the standard form will be x squared. Uh, negative eight and plus two will give us negative six x minus 16. And that should be it. That's your standard form for these two solutions. Now, uh, for those people that understand it very well, you could just omit this, uh, this uh, information. Uh, we could do things like, again, do the opposite of that number and put them in parentheses. And that's all you need to know, uh, just the opposite of that. Let's go ahead and practice a little bit more. Again, we have our solutions six and eight, and we need to write it down in quadratic function in standard form. So like I mentioned, what is the opposite of six? Well, negative six and put it under parentheses. What is the opposite of positive two? Well, negative two. So x minus two. And then do the FOIL system. x times x will get x squared. Then x times negative two, you get negative two x. Negative six times x, you get negative six x. And then negative six, times negative two will give us a positive 12. Combine like terms, and your final result will be x squared minus eight x plus 12. For those that, that likes the flower, here you go. That's your little flower. These are just the steps of how to um, how to solve the, the, the problem from solutions to standard form. Um, so we analyze the given information, formulate a plan, determine the solution, justify the solution, evaluate the problem. So we, we skipped some of them because technically uh, we don't need to go that detail like the, the first example here, which uh, this part, 
Technically, that's that's only for for beginners that doesn't understand much and needs a little bit of practice. But if you consider a little bit of a, of a extra mode, uh, expert mode, then you could just get that extra information and go straight to the parentheses and then perform the FOIA system. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and practice it again. But now we're going from a graph to a standard form. In this case, uh, we, we do need to uh, figure out our A value. So our solutions is going at, let's see, since they're going by ones, so this is going at location two. And the other location is going at negative one from those two blue dots. So we have uh, y equals a parentheses parentheses opposite of two is negative two. Opposite of negative one is positive one. All right, so we still need to figure out our A. So first let's FOIL this uh, uh, expression, y equals a, x times x, you get x squared. And then uh, you have negative two times one, you get negative two at the end. And when you combine those two, negative two and one, you get negative x on the middle. Okay, I just eliminated a little bit of extra information. Again, if you're having trouble with the FOIL system, you need to go back and review chapter seven. All right, so we're gonna analyze this uh, graph and we're gonna choose a random point in order for us to solve for our A value. Uh, the best point we could choose is our Y-intercept at location, let me put it in blue at this location at zero and negative two. Zero comma negative two. That's our location for this dot at the y-intercept. All we need to do is just substitute this value into this expression. So our y is gonna be negative two. We write down a. We substitute the value of x with zero. So we have zero minus zero again, minus two. So therefore we have negative two equals negative two a, because this is zero, zero, and then negative two times a is negative two a. So this is multiplication. Uh, in order to solve for a, we need to do the opposite of that. So divide opposite of multiplication is divided by negative two on both sides so your a is going to be a one so your final expression uh standard form is just going to be y equals x squared minus x minus two this is your final standard form and technically you're, you're done. Okay. The one is basically, we just substitute this value on one here. So one times all of this expression will give us just this. All right. So that's the way uh, uh, you do from graph to standard form of the parabola shown. Uh, let's go ahead and practice this one more time. Our solutions are x equals and x equals, which is the x-intercepts of the parabola. We notice that there are 10, so they're going by five. So your first one is negative five and five. Five and negative five. Opposite of positive five is negative five. 
opposite of uh, negative five is positive five. And then perform the FOIL system. Oh, don't forget your, your A. Perform the FOIL system. And we have x squared and then negative five times five, we get negative 25. So negative five plus five will get a zero. So we don't need to put anything uh, for the middle section. So technically this is your quadratic function. Let's solve for a by choosing a random number. Best thing to do is just get the y-intercept at this location at zero comma, let's say they're going by and by fives, we could see. So this is negative five, 10, negative 15, negative 20 and 25. Okay, so your Y is gonna be negative 25, A, and then you have a zero for your X, minus 25. Again, we're substituting this value, the, this point into the expression. So we have negative 25 equals negative 25 A. Divide negative 25 on both sides and your A is one. To write in a standard form, you have Y equals just basically x squared minus 25 because this one was substituted back to here and we get this result as the final result because one times x squared minus 25 you get the same thing all right so if you still having trouble just look over it very carefully step by step and press pause write down some notes, try and understand it, analyze it, or also I'll go ahead and ask uh, some questions uh, through my email. Here we're, we're just trying to figure out our translation. We notice that our parent function is uh, x squared. We wanna know from this was translated to this new location. If you recall from my past uh, lessons, uh, we, we went over our vertex form. The vertex form basically tell us uh, how the parabola behaves, uh, its behavior. So our A is gonna be the face of the parabola, either pointing upwards or downward. If you have a, um, an absolute value of A greater than, uh, Greater, greater than zero, and if your absolute value of, of A is less than zero, then it looks like this on the bottom. But our main focus uh, is our shift horizontally and our vertically. Technically, uh, if you have a, a minus, it's the opposite of that. So opposite of negative three goes to the right three units. If you have a plus three opposite of that, it goes three units to the left. So you're gonna be thinking about the opposite of that. But for the K, you're not gonna be looking for the opposite of that. It's either positive or negative um, on the vertical axis. Every time you're doing a horizontal shift, it has to be under parentheses and a square. Just, that's just a quick review, but most of you should, should already know this from the past lessons. All right, let's get right into this and let's break this down. So let's go ahead and, and write down the vertex form. You have a, a x minus your h squared plus the k, all right? So right now we don't know what's our a. But let's figure out our horizontal shift. The horizontal shift went from this part all the way to this location. Okay, so you move eight units to the, to the left. If we're gonna do, uh, 
write it down in a vertex form. We need to think about the opposite of that. So opposite of negative eight is positive eight. And then squared. Okay. Positive eight, the opposite of that is gonna be negative eight. Yeah, again, we're if we try to solve our zeros, if we put this expression uh, as equal to zero, then you'll get negative eight. That's the reason for it, uh, that we're doing the opposite of that. Just for your own knowledge, uh, this is back in the lessons. Our K, it means that it went units going up. How many? Only two. So you're gonna put plus two units going up. Okay, now on the expression that we have here, we just need to figure out um, what's gonna be our A and we need to uh, foil this system. So you have X plus eight and we need to rewrite it again, X plus eight and then plus two separately. But I noticed that um, on the parent function, you have x squared. We can already tell that our a, it's a one because there's no number next to this. So we could eliminate this a or we could just put a one or you could just leave it as blank if we analyze the parent function. So we don't need to figure out the a too much. We just need to foil the, foil the system. So x times x, x squared. x times eight and another eight, we have 16x when you combine those two. And then eight times eight, we get a 64. Eight times eight is 64 and then plus two, we got 66 and then this is your quadratic uh, uh, function in a standard form, okay? So technically that's what happened. Um, from here, it was trans uh, translated into this. So parent function, this is how you start it. This is how you end it. So this is start. This is how you end it. Okay, it was moved from here to here. And this is your new uh, expression, your standard form. Let's practice this a little, uh, one more time. Pretend that, uh, well, your parent function is this, which is the same one that we just uh, had on uh, the previous uh, question. And then, we notice that there's, uh, oh yeah, we need to write it down as a vertex form. So our A, since we started with a one, that's gonna be your one. And then X squared and then plus your K. So let's figure out our vertical, I mean our horizontal shift. So if we look here at the vertex, it will shift to units horizontally. So opposite of two is negative two. And then it went how many units going up? It went up five units. So you put plus five. Now go ahead and do the FOIL system. X minus two, X minus two, and then the plus five. x times x, you get x squared, then negative two, and another negative two, you get negative four x, and then negative two, and negative two will give us positive four plus five, we get plus nine. So technically your answer is letter, letter B. Now, there's an easier approach to this. Um, you could just 
look at the answer choices. You could put it in the calculator. You could graph each one of them and see which one it will provide this type of graph. You could also do that as well instead of going through through this approach. Uh, just to let everybody know. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions or any concerns, please uh, let me know and send me an email. Thank you for watching. Have a nice uh, day. Bye.